So tonight we're going to be looking at 2 Timothy chapter 1. Yes, and we're going to, we're going to uh, starting at verse 13, and we're going to finish that chapter um, tonight. So 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 13 to the end. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Figelus and Hermogenes. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. <coughs> Excuse me. So, it kind of reminds you that you're reading a letter, doesn't it? I think as it comes to yeah. the end there, it just has that kind of quality. Um, an epistle is a letter, and it has that kind of I don't know, personal kind of quality. So it starts off um, verse thirteen and fourteen. Um, we have two things to which the apostle Paul makes reference to. Uh, in verse 13, he says, the form of sound words. And in verse 14, he says, that good thing. I believe he's referring in both those um, instances to the same thing, namely the doctrine or the teaching that Paul has brought with him, that, that Timothy, has, Timothy has heard, you know. And so uh, it's quite interesting you know, the way he phrases it, I, I, I like that, that form of sound words, because we talk about sound doctrine, don't we? Um, and uh, elsewhere, sort of in, in, in Titus 1 verse 9, Paul says, holding fast the faithful word. Uh, so in, in 2 Timothy 1, it's sound words. In Titus 1 verse 9, it's the faithful word. So holding fast the faithful word, as he hath been taught, that he may be able, and here's that phrase again, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince, or, or some, sometimes it's used not just to convince, but to convict the gainsayers, so those who are saying against. So the emphasis here to Timothy, Paul is saying, look, don't forget that sound top doctrine, that good thing that I taught you. And, it, and this is really an exhortation to Timothy to, what did it say? Hold fast to it. You know, don't, don't be tempted to abandon it, uh, but hold fast to it. Make it, make it central, uh, Timothy, to your, to your ministry. Um, so, so really verses 13 and 14 are an exhortation um, not to depart from the doctrine that was given by Paul. And, and the New Testament shows us that believers can depart from doctrine, you know. Um, Jude says, uh, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. I always think that's an interesting sort of phrase. He's saying, look, you know, you used to know this, but now I've got to remind you again. Of this basic this basic teaching this basic doctrine and with Jude it's more about uh, how those that, that, that didn't believe on the Lord perished in the wilderness uh, but he, he, he's I guess he's what Jude is doing is to remind them again look you live by faith uh, you know and if you don't live by faith you're not going to enter into the kingdom of God it's, it's a life of faith and here Paul's saying, right, you know, uh, you know, I guess it was more fresh maybe in Timothy's mind what Paul had been teaching him. But it's an exhortation not to depart from that doctrine. You know, don't be, um, 
don't 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 I, I shouldn't have to come and remind you again to speak to you again about this particular doctrine if you hold if you hold fast to it uh, if you hold fast to the faithful word again that's another phrase uh, that is used I think in Titus 1 and it's amazing really when when you look around at, at evangelical churches today uh, churches who at one time would never have had uh, a woman pastor or who would never have considered uh, things like uh, uh, same-sex marriage as acceptable now actually completely changing their views you know on well-known names as well uh, who's the guy the oh, Steve Chalk who used to be on everything you know used to be on the uh, TV and, and radio and so on and he's the guy behind Spring Harvest and all those sort of things now uh, and was considered you know basically mainstream fairly solid evangelical now uh, marrying same-sex couples in his church you know it's it's just churches that would said we would never go for that and now they're now going for that uh, and, and it, this you know You know, they once knew this. They once knew this, and now they've forgotten it. Now they've they've changed their view on it. They, they've, they've moved on. So look at uh, Matthew 24. Um, I think Matthew 24, um, verse 9... Whilst, whilst it's dealing with prophetic things, it, it demonstrates a principle or a connection between certain things. That's why I really want to read it. So Matthew 24, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved so that's that's kind of scary isn't it in one sense but do you remember last week we were talking about persecution how anyone who wants to live godly will suffer persecution and of course, Paul is writing this in a prison cell in chains. You know, he's already suffered that persecution. Um, and I think what's interesting about this passage here in Matthew 24 is there seems to be a connection between Christians being afflicted and persecuted uh, and hated. And then it said in verse 10, many being offended and betraying one another. In other words, they lose, uh, some Christians will lose their their boldness, their steadfastness, they'll get scared and they'll start, you know, uh, 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 they'll start to betray uh, one another. Uh, and then there's another, there's a third thing that comes along and that's false prophets or false teachers and deception. So you've got, you've got persecution, you've got, Christians um, being afraid then you've got false teachers and deception and then verse 12 because iniquity or sin shall abound the love of many shall wax cold so there's a connection then between that becomes sin and then because of that sin there's a, a loss of love um, and that's that's of course the heart of any Christian church is love isn't it because jesus says you know by this shall all men know that you are my disciples that you have love one to another but can you see the the connection there's times of persecution in those times of persecution some christians lose spirit or become afraid uh they start to betray one another uh and then there's uh there's uh, this, this kind of influx of false teaching and deception uh there's sin and then there's a loss of love and I, th and I think that's is really, um, you know, it shows there's a connection between persecution, sound doctrine, uh, and there's sort of this, the, this dividing of the ways. You know, those who remain bold, those who are not afraid, 
hold to that sound doctrine and and suffer persecution i was reading um i was reading there's a lot of trouble in nigeria at the moment you may or may not know um with um is it isis i think it's isis uh but anyway uh, um it's 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 one of the muslim uh sort of terror groups and there was a nigerian pastor who they 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 tried to what they do they film them you know uh and they wanted him to to renounce his christianity uh and he wouldn't he was just praising god all the time and he was saying well i'll see my uh i'll see my wife and children and and my friends soon uh by the grace of God, but if not, that's okay. You know, it was sort of, it was just incredible show of boldness. They just couldn't get him to to, to renounce his his faith, and they killed him. You know, but it's just that in that moment, and I guess you don't really know whether how you would react in a situation like that. But I think it's those who are afraid and fearful who who move their position. And there's another kind of I think there's a fearfulness in even in our gentle, you know, kind of free society that we live in, I think some Christians are afraid of just standing up and saying, look, the Bible says this, and therefore that's what I believe. Because it's like, well, if I say that, people won't understand, they'll, you know, um, they'll be called a bigot and, 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 and so on. And so there is a temptation for some people, not all, but there's a temptation for some Christians to then go soft on it and sort of say, oh, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's not all about the Bible. Maybe we have to consider society as well and the way things have changed. And, and, and what I say is if, that, if people think along those lines, you're falling under deception. You're falling under, just like here in, 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 in Matthew 24 we looked at, you're coming under that deception. You're coming, because don't forget, false doctrine is sin. You know, if you come under that false doctrine, uh, you, you're, com you're coming under iniquity, you're practicing iniquity, and therefore your love, even though you think you might be being more loving, your actual agape love that comes from God will grow cold. Because you cannot, you cannot have the kind of love that comes from God, you cannot sustain that if you are, if you are being disobedient to God. You know, if you are, if you set yourself up as a judge upon God's word. You know what I mean? It's like where you're kind of like, oh, I think I know better than God. And you can't judge God's word. You tell you to allow God's word to be your authority. Mm -hmm. So I do think there's a, a connection there. And I think that's what Paul is picking up on with Timothy uh, here when he's saying to him, hold fast the form of sound words uh, and that good thing which was committed unto thee. Yeah, you, you, you're to hold fast to this, Timothy. Um, and he says uh, he, he's told, he tells Timothy to keep it by the Holy Ghost which dwells in him now how, how does the Holy Spirit enable Timothy to keep that sound doctrine let's turn to John 16 John 16 and uh, verse 13 says how be it when he the spirit of truth that is the holy spirit when he the the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come those good things right so the truth is confirmed in us and in Timothy as he yields to the spirit. Therefore, if his conscience is not allowed to become seared, if his heart is not hardened by sin, then he will continue to hold to that same doctrine. And it's the same with all of us. You know, if we continually yield to the Holy Spirit, we're not going to be affected by changes that are going on in society or this preacher's come up with a new, you know, a new take on it. Or was it Wesley always used to say, uh, uh, if it's new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not new. You've just, you just didn't hear about it before. It's, it's always been there. You know, because, because God's word is unchanging. 
and therefore uh, by yielding to the Holy Spirit by by not allowing your conscience to become seared by not allowing your heart to be hardened then you will hold to that same doctrine you know you're not going to be flipped back and forth by by new trendy doctrines um and in fact to to to, to be that kind of person shows that you are you know if you're the sort of person who like you know oh yeah yeah i think i think i'm into this now oh no no i i, I believe this oh no i know I'm, I'm a calvinist now oh no 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 i'm a dispensationalist oh, no, you know this kind of flipping back and forth from doctrine to doctrine shows spiritual immaturity let's have a look at it in uh, ephesians uh, ephesians 4 Ephesians 4, um, 11. And this shows how the church works as well. How, how edification works in the church. So Ephesians 4, verse 11, talking about spiritual gifts. It says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even christ so i read that in context because i think it's important you know this is why you have teachers and pastors in churches this is why you have evangelists and so on is to build up the church to to strengthen the church so that they might no longer be like spiritual children you know uh, and such a, a great phrase tossed to and fro um, almost like a kind of a ship on the water I think you know kind of when it's really windy you're kind of like whoa they're up there and then they're down there and, you know and it's sort of that spiritual maturity yeah God's great it's wonderful oh no I don't think I just want to be you know I'll go back to my old life now and there's an immaturity about the up and down and, and, and what God has put gifts in the body for is to help you grow so that you're no longer like that so that you find stability so that you grow up to be in, he said into the full stature um, of Christ isn't it so so it's kind of growing up to be more like Christ in every way in everything compassionate like he was bold like he was knowledgeable like he was you know just in, in uh, you know at peace like he was and and so on all those things you know that is really uh really uh christian growth and so this is what paul is teaching here is you know he wants timothy to hold fast to that doctrine because that doctrine is going to get him through and it's the same for us today if we hold fast to the word of god if we're not compromising on things or, you know, saying, oh, well, yeah, I always did believe that, but now I'm not sure because everybody seems to say something different. If that doesn't matter to you, that you are, you know, one in a thousand people who believe this, if it's just like, yeah, but that's what it says. I can't read it any other way. You know, I'm not just saying like, oh, this is what I believed and that's what I've always believed. You know, you have to have, actually have a reason for believing it. You have to be able to put the scriptures together and say, because, because, because. Um, that's a song, isn't it? But <laughs> you have to be able to put it together, you know, with scripture upon scripture to show why you believe it. But once you've established that, what, why change to be, you know, to be more acceptable to the world? You know, once it's established, that's it. You hold fast to it. I mean, it must have been amazing having, you know, a teacher like the Apostle Paul for Timothy, you know, to teach in this sound doctrine, uh, what does he call it, um, uh, th this, this form of sound words, that good thing. He said, I've given you something good, Timothy. I've given you this sound uh, doctrine. You know, and you can imagine everybody wanting to sit under the leadership of the Apostle Paul and wanting to be part of his team, right? 
wrong <laughs> because what did we read um, as we got down to verse 15 this thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me so in other words all when he says all I think he's generalizing that would become apparent because at the end he talks about uh, uh, people like Onesiphorus uh, how do you say that um, but he's saying all in Asia, probably Asia Minor, not not the, what we would call the entire Asia, but but all in Asia have turned away from me. They've all, to you know, just like with the Lord Jesus Christ when he was 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 sent to his, he was arrested and brought to his crucifixion, and everybody ran off and, and scattered and left him. Paul is is now in chains, and all the people that were with him, they've all gone. You know, they've all left him. And uh, and he's on his own, and so that's been again one of the kind of themes here, hasn't it? You know that when persecution comes, you like to think that when persecution comes, you'd rise up to the challenge, and it would kind of yeah, it'll purify the church, and you know then we'll be a force to be reckoned with. But actually, one of the effects of it is those who are weak, those who haven't been built up, those who are still, if you like, ch children in the faith, fall away. You know they get scared, and 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 so uh, they get scared. They listen to false teaching. Um, um, they 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 become involved in iniquity. They practice iniquity. Uh, their love for God and therefore their love for others grows cold, and they do not endure to the end. And that's that's what happens. That's that's the process, if you like, and it's helpful to know that process. So the actual holding to the word of God and holding to um, sound evangelical doctrine. I'm not talking about here, you know, Calvinism v. Arminianism. I'm just talking about what is generally held to be biblical truth, you know, is, is it's your protection, you know. It's the thing that will stop you backsliding it's the thing that will stop you being afraid and again we talked about that didn't we uh, uh, about about being afraid about being ashamed of the connection between the two and so Paul is saying here you know all that be in Asia uh, be turned away from me and some commentators think it, they, th this could be Jewish Christians you know going back to Judaism uh, to you know because uh, of the persecution they're suffering you know like well if we go back to being Jews we won't be persecuted in this way uh, that I don't know that was just um, uh, the view of some of some commentators but I think as a general principle uh, it is because Paul is being is being persecuted he's being thrown in prisons um, in prison rather uh, so I think it is reasonable to assume that their desertion of Paul is from a fear of being persecuted themselves because they think well if we stay with this guy we're going to end up in prison too yeah you probably are but but that's that's you know that's what paul that's what paul was was brought into that was that was god's will for him you know and uh, it, again it's about surrendering your life to god and saying not my will but thine you know uh, i i'm here I'm here to serve God, and that's it. Whatever, whatever He, He desire, uh, decides. So it's. I think I think when God shakes the church or allows the church to be shaken, uh, there are very few that survive that shaking. It would seem to be so historically, um, and, and biblically. Uh, only the faithful, only the only the fighters. <laughs> are going to survive you know and we've got all those wonderful pictures in the scriptures of um you know those who 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 are soldiers for christ who will not you know they're not they're not involved in civilian affairs because there's the they know it's their lot to fight for christ to be his soldier uh to do his his bidding it's only those who have their roots in christ uh, that survive that shaking and forgive me for sharing this again I've shared it many times but um, uh, Carol and I were in a church where you know the church was shaken 
and um, many of the young people that I was uh, that, that were in my church that were the same age as me at the time in their teens and sort of uh, early 20s um, not all of them but many of them uh, now don't even identify as Christians you know and they, they were there some of them before I became a Christian you know they were kind of the people that I first met when I became a Christian and we used to talk about you know you know when we you know when we uh, what it'd be like when we're, we're with the Lord and you know how amazing it was to pray together and study the word together and talk about you know our lives together and it never would have occurred to me that they would fall away uh, and yet they have done you know spectacularly you know if that's the word some so it happens but but it's like where is your root where are you rooted are you rooted in your friends are you rooted in my church are you rooted in the pastor it can be sometimes you know are you rooted in other things other than christ himself let's have a look at colossians chapter 2 <clears throat> i'll finish with this Philippians, Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians 2 and verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. That is, you know, abiding in him. Rooted and built up in him. And established in the faith. As you have been taught. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. That's a great quote, isn't it? Um, but I like that rooted and built up in him. You know, my roots go down into Christ. So anything else can be shaken. Anything else can be removed. People can let me down uh, or disappoint me. You know, I can face all kinds of troubles and, uh, and my whole world can be shaken. But I'm rooted in Christ. I, I'm, I'm standing on the rock, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to be okay, is what it's saying, isn't it? As the storm is raging, you know, I'm still going to be okay. Um, ooh, what's that? There's a hymn that's just come to my mind. I'll finish with it. And I said I'll finish with that. I'll finish with this. Um, Praise to the Lord is the hymn. Let me see if it's here. Uh, Praise to the Lord. Yes, the Almighty. 39. Yes, if you're watching this, page 39, uh, sorry, hymn 39. Um, so it says in verse 3 of this hymn, Praise to the Lord who when tempests their warfare are waging, who when the elements madly around thee are raging, biddeth them cease, turneth their fury to peace whirlwinds and waters assuaging there's this picture of being you know we're talking about storms and things you know all this kind of whirlwinds and stuff going on around all this persecution that paul is you know is is seeing and yet there's peace in the eye of the storm he's rooted in christ it's just going on around him but it's like praise to the lord because whilst this is all going around God, God, God bids these things to cease. Where you are, you're okay. You'll be all right. You know, and I think that's it's just a beautiful picture of being to be rooted in Christ is also to be rooted in sound doctrine, isn't it? The two go together. You know, teaching should be Christocentric, should be centered on Christ for us. And therefore, once you've found that good thing, uh, that sound form of words don't let it go don't be tempted or distracted into other flashy doctrines and you know the latest thing the newest this or that 
but stand on that rock, stand on Christ and hold fast to his uh, doctrine.